Hi, I'm Mary Poplin, and today we're going to be going over tracking difficult screen inserts inside of Mocha for After Effects Creative Cloud. Now, that's the free version that comes with After Effects Creative Cloud, so we're going to open up After Effects CC, and we're going to start a new project. I'm going to show you how to track things in Mocha. So we go to Import File, and then all we do is we import our file and we make a new composition. So we're just going to drag that down into the little menu area here. And we're going to go to our animation window, and we are going to go ahead and hit Track in Mocha for After after Effects. What that will do is that will load up Mocha for After Effects and from here we start a new Mocha project. We just want to make sure that our composition settings match our After Effects settings and that we've named our files correctly. From here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and scrub through the file. We're going to check and see if this is the correct file and if the frame range is correct and then we're going to select our X spline and we're going to go ahead and draw an shape around an area of texture so that we can track those pixels. Mocha tracks pixels moving relative to one another, that is textures on the same plane. We're going to track a minimum of 30% of the pixels within the shape and we're going to track translation scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. So when we hit track forward, what we're seeing is we're seeing what the track is doing because we have the surface and grid tool on. Now the surface and grid tool are children of the track, right? So they're going to show us exactly what the track is doing. I'm not a thousand percent thrilled with what this track is doing, so I think I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Uber key and go ahead and add a larger area to track, so I'm going to track more texture of this screen by adding this shape to my screen. Now I'm avoiding the screen because I'm not sure whether or not there's a reflection there that Mocha can see and I can't. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn shear and perspective off. Don't be afraid to change parameters in the middle of the track. Sometimes you can get a better track that way. Now I'm going to align my surface tool to my track, right, to my screen area. The reason I do this is because I want to see what the object I'm trying to track is doing. So I want to make sure my surface tool is aligned properly because this is going to be how Mocha translates a corner pin out to After Effects. All right, so we're just going to keep tracking until we get something that looks good. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit track backwards until we're done. Looks like pretty good. Actually, that looks way better than it did. So never be afraid to track over the information you've already tracked. Now we're going to go ahead and see how this looks. I feel like that looks pretty good. And from here what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about what we've done. Now, I've come in here and I have used my surface and grid tool to see what the track is doing and now we're going to over scan my surface tool. We're going to do this because in Mocha for After Effects, the free version, not the upgrade version, you don't have the lens tool. We have that in the upgrade for Mocha for After Effects and Mocha Pro. So I'm going to need to over scan this screen so that I can compensate for the curved edges in the screen when I put my insert into After Effects. So that's what I'm doing here. Now. I'm going to use the zoom tool and zoom out, make sure everything looks good. Um, I like to scrub through a couple of times to see what the track is looking like. I feel like that works a little bit better than hitting play just because I can see what it looks like on any given frame and I have control over the playhead. From here what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about some of the options that we have inside of Mocha for After Effects. Um, you can pretty much use the layer properties tool to change anything you need to about your layer, set in and out points, link shapes to tracks, and even mess with keyframing. So you have a lot of powerful tools inside of Mocha for After Effects Creative Cloud. Now, from here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to align our surface to the corners of the image. Now, the reason we're doing that is because of the way that After Effects treats corner pins and compositions that you paste corner pins onto. So I'm going to go ahead and load an insert into here, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to drag our screen above our image so that I can position it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here and do some scaling and adjustment of my shape and see if I can get it how I want it. Now, I don't know that I'm happy with this, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this as an overlay, and I'm doing that so I can see what the screen is doing. And We're going to come in here and we're going to grab a corner pin distortion tool out of the effects menu, and I'm going to go ahead and move my screen how I think it should be in the shot. And let's talk about some of the things that you want to watch out for when you're compositing in After Effects from Mocha. We're going to pre-comp this corner pin, okay, and the reason we're doing that is because Mocha has to paste the data in on a composition that's exactly the same as the clip that it started from, okay? So we're going to go back to 
Mocha, and we're going to go to export tracking data. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to export our corner pin, okay, as a corner pin with motion blur. We're going to copy that to the clipboard. We're going to go back over to After Effects, and it's just this simple. What we're going to do is we're just going to make sure we're on the first frame, and we're going to get Edit, and we're going to go to Paste, okay? And now what this will do is this will paste my tracking data onto my comp. Now you're going to see some limitations here. Uh-oh. Because the comp is the same exact size, we've run into a problem, okay? Well, what we're going to do from here is we're actually going to just expand our comp size. So we're going to go to our composition settings, and we're going to go ahead and expand this comp to some ridiculous size, all right? So that the edges will be visible when the comp goes off screen. So there we are. And now this is sitting where it's supposed to sit inside of After Effects, all right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and drag this under my screen and what we're going to do is we're going to use After Effects to finish this comp and we're going to do some Roto and Mocha. So I'm going to key out this blue screen using key light. So all I'm going to do is just select the blue and we're going to adjust some settings. So we're going to come in here and we're going to adjust basically our mat settings, our gain settings, okay, and our shrinking and growing of our mats, okay, until we get something that looks good. Now. From here, I'm going to play and see if this pulled right. Well, I feel like this needs some refining. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to mats. And we're going to go to a mat choker. I'm just going to choke this mat until I feel like my settings are correct and I get rid of some of those sparklies. I'm getting those sparklies because this is really grainy footage, so you got to be careful of that. Now, from here, what I'm going to do, I don't like the way my corner pin is sitting, so I'm going to adjust it inside of my pre-comp. And then we're going to go back to our main comp, and we're going to see how this looks. So jumping back to our main comp, what you're going to see is you're going to see that our screen is now more or less in the center where I want it to be. Now from here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to match from this focus blur. So I'm going to go ahead and hit I think box blur is what I usually use. Yeah, we're going to use box blur and I'm going to go ahead and do just a sort of animated blur on this layer. And the reason we're doing that is so we can get some focus blur to match what's going on in the shot. All right. Now, again, I kind of need to figure out how to make the matte edges not so um, hard, right? Because that's not selling the composition. The thing about compositing is you have to sell the composition. So we're going to make a roto shape around the screen and the edge of this guy's arm so that we can sell this more. We're going to use an adjustment layer to put an overall blur over this entire screen and edge so that we get a nice look. So now that we've made our shape, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to go ahead and link this to the screen track so that we don't have to do any extra work because that's the track that we already had. We're going to export this as shape data for After Effects. And then inside of After Effects, we're going to go to um, a new solid and we're going to make a matte solid. So we're just going to go ahead and make it a white solid. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to Edit, and we're going to go to Paste Mocha Mask. Okay, that's different than Paste. If we hit Paste, it would paste it in as Effect, but we want it to come in as a spline, all right? Now, I'm going to adjust my spline. I'm going to make some feather here. I'm going to expand the mask a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this nice blurry edge, all right? So that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to compensate for this blur that's happening in the shot. If I was feeling extremely froggy, what I would do is I would go in and make a other separate roto shape on his arm and even blur that edge even more. But we're just going to do this quick and dirty. From here, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and apply a box blur to our adjustment layer over the top. And we're going to adjust our box blur until I get something that I like. All right, so I feel like about 15 pixels is good. So to reiterate, what we're doing here is we are matching the focal blur that's happening in the shot. After Effects is really strong for quick and dirty animations that help you get your shots out the door quickly. And paired with Mocha, we're pretty unstoppable. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come in here and we're going to match the grain. So I like this tool called Match Grain. Basically it's an effect. I always put it on Final Output and I tend to just use the original layer that I was using the shot in the first place. And so we're, what we're doing is we're matching the grain to the original plate. And After Effects does a pretty good job of guessing what the grain is. You can adjust the settings if you find they don't match, but for shots like this that are super grainy, it actually matches really well, and you can see that in the playback. Now, 
I speed my renders up and my playbacks up so that you guys don't have to sit through like, you know, boring, boring shots. So don't think that it's going to be this fast when you are compositing. One of the problems with pulling our blue key is that we've pulled our blue light as well. So in Mocha, I'm just going to roto that out. I'm just going to draw a shape around it right in Mocha. And what we're going to do is we're going to link this shape the same way we link all our shapes to our screen track. So we just go to link to track and we go to screen track and now our shape will follow our light throughout the shot. Same thing, we just go to export Mocha shape data, jump back over to After Effects, and we just go to edit and we go to paste Mocha mask. And very, very quickly, we get our light roto shape. I'm going to feather this. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and feather this several pixels. And we're going to um, expand or contract the mask as I see fit. In this case, we're actually going to subtract the mat a little bit. And from here, we're just going to composite this over the top. So we end up with a more naturalistic looking shot. From here, it's just as easy as adding it to our render queue, going ahead and changing this to a quick time. You can change it to whatever format you like and whatever format options you like. We're just going to go ahead and hit OK, decide what our output path is going to be. We're going to go ahead and hit Save, and then we're going to go ahead and hit Render. OK, so once we hit Render, our file will render, and let's just take a look at what that looks like. Now, this is our final shot with our matched grain, our recomped light, our insert, and our adjustments with our mocha shapes. So you can see very quickly you can get some very powerful results with Mocha for After Effects and After Effects Creative Cloud. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more, go to ImagineerSystems.com. We have a very easily navigatable website. We also have a forums for our users. We also have a Facebook, so look us up there. We're, we've got tons of promos and giveaways on there sometimes. And we also have a Twitter where you can go ahead and follow our hashtag mocha tips and we also have a google group all right it's called mocha pros and speaking of mocha pros we also have a linkedin group called mocha pros so pretty much wherever you are on the web so are we all right guys i'm mary poplin with imagineer systems and this has been mocha for after effects creative cloud